Basically, uh, what I'm going to tell you or show you today is a very brief overview uh, about one uh, very small and uh, interesting uh, system which fits in uh, such matchbooks. Uh, my dream was to have a PDP-11 because I worked with uh, digital equipment a long time ago. Uh, to have a PDP in a such matchbox box, yeah? And I think today is the situation we can do that. And I will show you how, yeah? Uh, <laughs> it's very easy, basically. So, BSD, you know what BSD is? I, I don't know because I'm not an expert. Uh, however, uh, retro, retro means uh, it's something old, yeah? This is invocation, it's, it's very old. Uh, and why? Because the people who, who work with that are old, yeah? We are seniors and the, the developer, Serge Vakulenko, is also a guy who spent, I don't know, 30 years with large developments uh, in the Soviet uh, era and, and in Russia, and now he's, he's sitting in the in, uh, US, in Silicon Valley, and uh, doing uh, MIPS uh, systems. Uh, basically, RetroBSD is a port of 211 BSD Unix, but it's really focused and intended for embedded systems. What is very important to say today is I'm not going to speak about uh, Pentium or AMD or, or uh, dual core ARM9 uh, versions of, of uh, processors, CPUs. I'm going to tell you something about MCUs, microcontrollers. It means those are chips you can find in your refrigerators. So uh, this is the message. And uh, if I saw in, uh, in the spring this year that there is a port of Unix for such microcontrollers, I said this is not possible. And I had a very long discussion with Serge, uh, telling him I, I don't believe it's possible because uh, Unix and Linux and such stuff needs MMU, and those processors doesn't have or don't have MMUs, memory management unit. So you cannot run such stuff on microcontrollers with fixed memory. Uh, this retro BSD port uh, Serge did, basically, uh, requires at least 128 kilobytes of RAM. There is not many chips on the market today with such big uh, internal uh, RAM. Uh, basically, microchip and maybe few uh, ARMs. Uh, flash is not so important. The home page is retrobsd.org. Um, you can see there a forum and a lot of discussions and uh, basically my, my uh, added value to that was I pushed a little bit uh, search to create the, the, the pages and I'm doing some, some uh, testing and uh, optimization related to the uh, microchip stuff and I did some stuff related to SD card performance. Um, what is also important the system is extremely minimalistic. Uh, briefly, the PIC32, uh, it's a standard chip today, it's a MIPS architecture, it's not ARM but MIPS. Uh, it allows uh, user and kernel mode basically, but it doesn't have any MMU unit, so it's a basically static static RAM. Uh, what is important that you can run your code from RAM. Yeah? You can run from your, your code from RAM. This is, this is possible with this uh, series of microchips and also with uh, ARMs. Yeah? Uh, this architecture is a little bit faster than ARM, but this is another, another discussion. What is important, you need at least 128 kilobytes Again, please be aware, I'm talking about kilobytes, 128 kilobytes of RAM to run this retro BSD, and flash is not important because it's basically empty. These chips run on 80 megahertz clock, both CPU and memory side, both peripheral side, 
peripheral bus, so they are extremely fast. But you cannot compare these chips with your chips you have in your mobile phones with Android or something like that. This is another story. Uh, when I'm talking about minimalistic, it means uh, basically you take few parts, uh, you sit down for two hours and you have your system ready. Yeah? And you spend maybe 15 US dollars. Yeah? So this is basically, uh, it's a, it consists of MCU. Yeah, and what is what is really mandatory is MCU SD card, uh, few few uh, resistors, board, crystal, and battery. Uh, you basically are connecting yourself uh, via a serial uh, serial uh, uh, um, connectivity, either RS two three two Bluetooth USB. It doesn't matter basically. It's a console. Uh, as I said, it's a minimalistic system. You need almost nothing, just the chip. Yeah? However, those chips are flat packs with a lot of legs. So <laughs> you, you need such breadboard. And there is a lot of boards, maybe 50 or 100 today available. Uh, maybe uh, what is interesting is uh, this is Arduino clone. Uh, from Digiland, uh, with uh, equipped with this chip, uh, this is uh, another another board. All those boards cost about thirty dollars. Uh, all the supported boards are described in detail on the on the on the pages. Uh, now, when I'm talking about uh, mi typical mini system, imagine you have one chip. For five dollars, you have a SD card for five euros, any you can find in in Tesco or somewhere. Few LEDs, if you would like to visualize somehow that the system is working, yeah. And then you need some connectivity. You you can use USB and also power the whole stuff via this USB. Uh, or you can use a standard serial console. I'm going to use a Bluetooth module because I like wireless stuff. So basically, basically this is, this is the, the whole system. There is no other chip needed. No buffers, no RAMs, nothing. Yeah? Just this, this uh, microcontroller. This microcontroller, of course, contains a lot of uh, peripherals. Yeah? There is, uh, I don't know, six UARTs and four SPIs and 80 pins, uh, uh, GPIOs, uh, one USB. Yeah? So, and internally, a lot of timers, uh, CAN bus, uh, I don't know what else. Yeah? It's a 30 bit computer, 30 bit CPU, so it's quite powerful. And also the port uh, of those of the BSD is is uh, 30. It's native 30-bit uh, port. Uh, so again, this is this picture is equal to the actual system. I can show the system to you. This is the system, specifically designed for today's event to demonstrate. This, this picture there is equivalent to real system here. So basically this is a battery, it's a SD card, Bluetooth module, and uh, what is the most important stuff is those four LEDs. LEDs. Uh, it's very important, I tell you, because it took me about two weeks to persuade Serge Vakulenko to enable this swap LED. Uh, because it's very nice to observe when the system swaps. Yeah? Uh, again, maybe to these uh, indicators, uh, basically uh, those LEDs will blink or, or make uh, they will lit uh, based on actual situation. Yeah? So basically there is a kernel IO disk swap and power LED, power LED is not uh, on this stuff, but, but directly directly on the board. So uh, the most important thing to see is this green LED, green LED, which is swap. I tell you why. 
uh, yesterday evening I asked uh, Serge to provide me with some some background how, how he did it because he started uh, two years ago and basically the the system started to work uh, uh, as required this summer uh, this was because there was a lot of work related to um, kernel and optimizing all these uh, libraries and so on for for the size yeah so you are experts I'm just silently observing this what he said basically there is a there was a lot of work uh, what to do The, the key question always been uh, whether we can run a Unix system on a chip without MMU. Yeah, and his answer in the summer, as I, I started to discuss with him, was as it is possible. I, I can see that it, it runs on my desk. I said, no, this is not possible. Expert says to, to say, say that this is not possible, and he's, he asked me so, so sh show me the experts. Yeah? So basically, uh, it is it is basically possible. Uh, you can run uh, by spe specific remapping, which is described here, and maybe it will be put al also on the pages how it's done. Basically, uh, the kernel runs several jobs, but not all jobs are always in the RAM, and they're, they are swapped, swapped, yeah, in a very tricky, tricky and difficult way for me to understand. Basically, what I can understand easily is this memory map, uh, and this is important to maybe mention. Uh, for for to run this B, BSD, retro BSD system on on this gadget, require only to have SD card. On the SD card, there is a swap file. This is this is message for specialists. Swap file on SD card, yeah, and then actual file system which contains the whole stuff yeah uh, this could be up to 60 64 gigabytes imagine uh, you have a system with one small chip and you can have 50,000 small programs which can be run yeah on this chip uh, you can handle megabytes of data easily via this chip and everything runs from from the SD card, yeah. So we don't need any external RAM, any, yeah, just the SD card. The question is whether the SD card will wear out, yeah, because SD cards, if you write too much, it will simply uh, destroy the card. There has been a lot of discussions about that, and the answer is no, because every SD card today has a wear leveling. So, uh, if you use, for example, a two giga card with uh, 128 megabytes file system, there is a lot of space the card can, can utilize for wear leveling. Uh, this is important because as we started in, uh, in April or, or, or May, the write and read speed was about 100 kilobytes per second. Yeah? And after several steps, we achieved this. And this is not much, but we are not using uh, high-speed uh, SDHC 4-bit uh, um, uh, uh, interface, which is currently used in all these cameras and so on, but we we using only SPI at 13 or 20 megahertz speed. Uh, what is important, what is here, this is MCU, as I said, it contains uh, 512 kilobytes of flash, in the flash we have kernel there, uh, and there is a lot of free space for another user uh, stuff like maybe libraries or something like that. And this is, this is also the biggest constraint because this is 96 kilobyte free for your applications, so your program must have or must fit into 96 kilobyte. This is not 
small amount. This is quite a lot. Imagine Atari, Commodore, and all these computers from 80s and 90s. There were 48 kilobytes. Yeah, you have now 96 kilobytes, and this is the maximal size of a program. You can run, of course, several such programs in parallel. Yeah, but by but you are swapping. Yeah. The kernel requires 32 kilobytes, and this is fixed. So basically 96 kilobytes. You can compile a system with 96 kilobytes maximum. Uh, the development tools, basically there is a package on the, on the site. Yeah? You can download it, download the, the stuff and, and compile easily. It takes you 20 minutes. Uh, there are two compilers. Uh, it's this GCC for MIPS, and uh, latest is this uh, Chipkit compiler for 5N. This is basically based on this. This is older version. Uh, what you get after the compilation under Linux, you get startup routine for for the microchip to initiate in, initialize the whole chip. Uh, because it's quite quite complex, uh, libc library, some utilities. Yeah, what is important is virtual MIPS. This is a full-fledged MIPS uh, simulator. Everything I will show you here, you can do directly under Unix, uh, uh, <coughs> under Linux uh, with this uh, virtual MIPS. So you don't have to have the you don't need to have this. Uh, this development board or or physical physical uh, gadget, and then you get get uh, bin utilities, as bin utilities, and what is important, you get root bin and hack Unix hex. This is basically what you need to flash into the chip, and we using a bootloader. There is a bootloader, so we can via USB we can bootload. Uh, this uh, Unix hex into the chip. This is basically the kernel. And then there is a root bin here, a root bin. This is basically an image of the root file system. And under Linux, you, you simply uh, copy on your SD card via DD and blah, blah. Uh, you copy the file system, and that's it. And after connecting all this virus, I'm Again, those are just wires. Yeah, it it will start, and and in the next uh, as as the next step, I will show you, I will show you how it works in reality because there is a lot of people telling me it it can't work and it will be very slow. And if if you are using swap, if you are using SD card for swap, it, it it's very slow. It will be very slow. Uh, what are the today's limits? Uh, it's ported only to these chips, uh, maybe search or somebody from from this auditorium will simply take over and do it for for uh, ARMs, for example. There are ARM STM 32F4, latest from uh, so uh, from ST Micro Micro uh, Electronics uh, with 196 kilobytes of RAM, maximum 20 task. Jobs, yeah. You can enhance up to six words because the chips. Yeah, and the swap is SD card placed on the SD card, and it's considered slow. We can enhance that somehow, but uh, the simplicity will go, will pass away then. Okay, so and now I, I will show you the uh, actual how it actually how it works, and you you will get a feeling. This is about the feeling, yeah. I'm not going to show you that the the, the commands work. Yeah, they really works, but it's about feeling. Okay. Yeah, to do. Yeah. <coughs> and and contributors want it because we don't have a lot of people involved. So if you're really keen on that, you can start. Just send a message to to uh, search or on the forum, so you can see that. So basically, uh, 
it's now powered from the batteries. If I will switch off, yeah. The issue, the issue is that I need to restart the uh, the Bluetooth. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is an, another uh, point. Uh, I, I didn't. I, I'm not using a button because of simplicity. I'm using just a wire. This, this is now. I'm going to do a reset. reset. Yeah. So basically, it. It, it, the kernel boots, yeah, and, and it's trying to boot the, 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 the SD card. You have here the information that I'm currently using 4 giga SD card speed. Uh, the root size is 131 kilobytes and the swap side. Everything what you see here, it's settable via makefile very easily. It's just few parameters and you run it, yeah. So uh, now we can I prepare here. I prepared a few, a few uh, 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 scripts. Yeah, not to not to spend too much time. So, for example, this is this is a demo how fast you can write two megabytes of data to to the SD card. Yeah. Maybe you, can you see some actions here? Perfect. So, so it took seven seconds. Yeah, I can, I can read, it will, it will take uh, three seconds. Yeah, so basically this card uh, is 300 kilobyte write and about 600 kilobyte read. My, the smaller the card, the faster, yeah. Now, uh, what is important is, uh, to show how the system works when there are some background tasks running. So I prepared printing of a calendar, for example. I'm in, in an endless, endless, endless loop. I'm, I'm just printing calendar for 2021, yeah? And this will be run in background, yeah? Yeah, so. Maybe you see some activity, you see that uh, we are running something calendar 21, so we are printing. You can see there is a 2021 file, yeah, and it will be increasing. I can, I can start uh, Cal 12, so I will now uh, print this. So you can see uh, calendar 25, there are several processes running, yeah? Uh, basically, basically, I can run in other applications. For example, I have here some calculations like uh, yeah, factor, factorials of I don't know what, I forgot it. Yeah, those are the factorials. I can edit maybe, yeah, this is uh, basically a round editor. Yeah. Uh, how it, uh, okay, so just to, just to show you that it really works. Yeah, it, it works, yeah. Uh, we can see, for example, the, the structure of the file system, yeah. Well, it's too fast. Uh, so, there are some temporary bin. 
Look at this bin. Those are all, all these commands and etc. Et in bin, it's uh, the average size is about 20, 30 kilobytes. Yeah, so it's not so big. Yeah. Those are the functions which you can use. I can demonstrate. Yeah. There is another, maybe the fast, uh, the, the the last one. It's uh, hello. Uh, it prints uh, hello to you. Uh, basically, uh, basically, there is a source code. You can compile your sources uh, in the Linux, but Serge is telling me I will develop a compiler which can compile the kernel directly on the system. It will take about one hour. This is acceptable. I don't know whether this is something we need. However, in Linux, you can compile what you, what you want. And for example, here is a hello point C. By the way, I'm still running printings of those calendars there. Yeah, this is this is the code I spent about two weeks with that. But uh, basically, it's uh, it's the it's the code. Yeah. So I can I can, for example, another shell. Command, uh, for example, this. I will I will print hello and append to the hello file also in the background. Another process, so you can see what we running. Yeah, and we can see also how, how it grows. Somebody had a presentation about the sizes, uh, about new file systems, a terabyte, zettabyte, petabyte. For this system, is absolutely no problem to generate zettabyte and femtobyte and I don't know what, what size is in, in several years. So basically, it's, it's a not big problem. You can see, for example, that I uh, there are two files. Those are the, those are the calendars and the hello, yeah. Whoa. Grows, yeah. So we we using uh, 16 megabytes. So in three four minutes we did about eight mega megabytes data, yeah. How much I have? It's always done. So, so last thing maybe. Uh, uh, I think it's enough. What do you need to see? Any special? Or you, you, you can come here and work with the system if you wish. Or afterwards, yeah. So basically, the the, the basic idea was uh, we can run Unix system on a chip which is very small, very cheap easily be done yeah, in, in two hours and uh, uh, we don't need memory manager unit we just swapping and this green LED there it's indicating we swap yeah so basically this is a bottleneck of the whole system because we swap on the on the SD card so uh, imagine we running the whole stuff basically with 128 kilobytes and everything else is on the SD card so Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much.